me. It's our hot, spicy chef, uh, Devin Rajkumar, here now. With the variety of peppers. Now, the How's it going, buddy? Good. How are you? So we know that you like it hot. So we thought, let's do a little bit of a lesson. You like a little bit of spice and a little bit of flavor in your food, as do I. So I always have. You know that on the show, I've always brought the heat. And yes. uh, today, there's no exception. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about Mexican chilies. And when you think about Mexican chilies, you think about poblanos and jalapenos and serranos. Right. However, when you're making chiles and moles and like really special, authentic Mexican dishes, the flavor will come from the dried version of the chilies. Okay. They're just like similar to a dried mushroom, packs more punch. Yes. These have all the complexity and depth. So I have a few popular, popular one here, popular chilies here that I want to talk about. Okay. First one is the pasilla or chile okay. negro. This is like kind of like a pruny kind of feel, a little yeah. bit of acidity, and none of the chilies that I brought here are way too spicy. So when you none go to the None of them are that spicy? No, they're not too too okay. spicy. You can get hotter ones, but when you go to the store, they want you want them to be pliable. If they're too dry, yeah. they're not going to work out very well. They're going to lose their intensity. Okay. So what you need to do is I have a blender here. I'm just going to take the lid off. What you need to do is take them and remove the seeds. This will help remove some of the bitterness from it. Okay. It'll also help you moderate the heat. So if you're cooking at home and you're making this chili recipe that we're going to make today, mm -hmm. you can remove the seeds and keep them to the side. And if you find you want your chili to have a bit more kick, you can add the seeds back in. Oh, I see. Okay. The next That's one I want to talk about that. is a wajillo. Wajillo. So sometimes it looks like guajillo, if you, if you kind of try to say it how it's spelled. Okay. So what you want to do is just take this one and you can just get the seeds out again. And then what you want to do is tear them, and they should tear pretty easily. You can give this guy a smell too. Yeah. And you can see what it smells like. It smells delicious. Oh, it does smell delicious. There's almost like a sweetness to there it. There is a sweetness, and that comes from the drying process. Yeah. And Oops, then we're going to take these. Seeds. That's okay. I've lost my seeds a long time ago. <laughs> so we're adding, adding all these into here. The last one that I brought that's like the kind of the key, and this has a lot of flavor. It's very, very popular. Yeah. Do you recognize this shape at all? It's very pruny. It looks like grapes or but, it looks like a pe No, it looks like a sweet pepper, okay. a bell pepper. So this is an ancho chili, which is known as a poblano. Oh, okay. So a dry right. poblano, similar we to We just how, want to get a shot of it right yeah, there. Yeah, sure, of course. Okay. Similar to how a chipotle pepper is a dried jalapeno. Right. Right. Sometimes when they dry them, it changes their names. So this oh. used to be a poblano, that green bell pepper-like one. Yeah. And now it turns into an ancho. So I want to tear it up. That's a lot of seeds in There's there. There's a lot of seeds in the sky. But again, the, on a Scoville unit, 1,000 to 2,000, which is not very hot. So if it's raw, you can probably eat it raw. What's I the highest? Eat yeah, you eat almost, the you highest? Would eat almost anything raw. What's the highest on that scale? The highest though? on that scale What's is 1.8 million yeah. to about 2 million. And that is the Carolina Reaper. And if you eat that, you're in a lot of trouble. Your head will like, we, pop we off. Act, we actually had a competition recently. We had a uh, cultivar and they brought some of these reapers in, and we had people eat them from the crowd. Mm. Because you know when you're having a few beers, you get you know you get a little bit risky. So yeah. that wasn't the word I wanted to use. But risky, that. yeah. <laughs> and then they ate them, and yeah, it wasn't a good scene. I think a couple people called in sick to work. We'll leave it at that. They'll burn your tongue off. That's it. So yeah. chilies go in. Okay. We want to get a good amount. And then on top of that, what you want to do is you want to add very, very hot water, boiling water and or stock into this. I don't want to splash mm -hmm. you there. And you want to cover up the chilies completely. Before you blend them, similar to dried mushrooms, you need to rehydrate them. So the okay. chilies have to soak up this liquid. Yes. It's almost like... You're preserving them, right? Remember we did that segment on preserving? Yes. You're taking this beautiful, fresh product, you're drying it out, you're intensifying the flavor, making it more complex. Mm -hmm. But to bring it back to life, you have to give it some life. So we add back some water, yep. and that's going to make it juicy and plump, and it will be able to blend it. And is there a reason why the water has to be hot? Is it just going to help it It'll uh, help take it It'll help it soften, in? yeah. Okay. If you use cold water, it's not going to really rehydrate it as well. Got and it. this is just some, This is really similar to mushrooms. Like a lot of risottos I make, I use dried mushrooms because they pack that really that intense aroma and that complexity. You can't get this depth with fresh peppers. You need right. to use these dried out peppers. And that's really why I wanted to talk about them today. They're okay. really important. All right. So uh, what else do you need to tell us about peppers here? What well, else you got? When you are processing these peppers, it's mm -hmm. probably a good idea to use some gloves yes because sometimes you know you but process do, would, peppers you then you go to the these? bathroom like who knows what you do after right would you even need gloves for these kind of peppers if they're so low on the scale still they're low on the scale but still imagine a jalapeno or a serrano or a poblano like you don't want to touch your eyes yeah or, 
your eyes or something yes, like that. Yes, or anything else. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. So it's really right. important that you wear gloves. Yeah. And also, you want to do big batches as well. So when you buy these chilies, you know, like I said, you want them to be nice and soft and pliable. Yeah. But if you're going to blend them and rehydrate them, then do a big batch. And then you store that jar in the fridge. Yeah. And then that's the base for your moles, your salsas, your oh, chili rellenos, your chili colorado. Right. Do a big batch at a time. So that's what we're going to do next. That's what we're going to um, do next. And so you would use this as your base. Yes. And that's going to give it the heat. And that's going to give it the heat, the yeah. color, that the, the whole thing. I think chilies with beans and kidney beans, I think it's more of a westernized thing. Yeah. Actual authentic Mexican chili is made with chilies, and that's really it with the meat. Yeah. You serve that with some nice charred tortillas, or you can use rice, but this is very classic as well. 